Hey guys, Pro1701, and today on Face Off, we are looking at classic Doctor Who versus modern Doctor Who. And the question I asked in this poll was, which one of these early seasons slash series do you think is better, or which do you prefer, and how much does missing episodes affect your decision? And it was between season three of Classic Who, which sadly is missing a lot of its episodes, only 17 out of its 45 episodes exist, um, or series three of Modern Who, or if you thought it was a tie or couldn't quite make up your mind. <coughs> now, for me, I prefer series three. Uh, series 3 is my favorite series of modern Doctor Who. Uh, David Tennant is just on fire here. He's so good in the role. Uh, at one point, he was my strong number two. He's about in the middle of my Doctor list now, but for a long time, I was a huge Tennant fanboy. Uh, he was my solid number two on the list, and I just rewatched his era so much. I've seen the, most of the episodes of Series 3 so many times, so many times. I used to go back and rewatch it a lot. And there's so many really good episodes, even underrated episodes that are just phenomenal to rewatch. Lazarus Experiment, uh, The Shakespearean Code, and Gridlock, I think all don't get enough love. They're great episodes. Um, and I like Martha a lot. Freeman does such a good job playing Martha, and she's such a well-written character. Uh, I like, you know, I know some people kind of find the her pining after the Doctor and him not over Rose thing a little cringy. But it's actually very central to her character and plays a big part in her decision to leave at the end of the series. And I love that. I love the fact that Martha leaves on her own decision because <coughs> she knows the Doctor is never going to feel the way about her that she does about him. Um, and I like that she decides to leave on that. We don't get a lot of just the companion deciding to leave in Modern Who. So I really like that. She really, I think, grows as a character, and even more so when we see her back in Series 4. So I, I like Season 3. Uh, it's not to say I don't. I haven't seen all of Season 3. I think I've seen six of the stories, six of the ten stories. Uh, I love the art. I think it's fantastic. It's phenomenal. It was the first Hartnell story I ever bought on DVD, so it's the first Hartnell story I've ever owned. I absolutely love it. Uh... I love The War Machines. It's just a well-written episode, and Hartnell's putting in a great performance, and it's a great introduction to Ben and Polly. Dodo's exit's kind of bad, but that's not uncommon in, in 60s Who. And The War Machines themselves look a little silly sometimes, but it's 60s Who. It's fine. Um, I like the... Uh, I liked Mission to the Unknown. I've seen the animated version, and I've seen the remake, the live-action remake of it. They're both good. I enjoy them. Uh, Galaxy 4 I really enjoyed. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I have some quibbles with the animation, some of the design, some of the decisions they made, like the Reels encampment into their ship looking so different that you actually think they're in the real ship, which they're not. They're in the little encampment set up outside the ship. Um, <clears throat> but the animation overall is good. Uh, I do like it, and I enjoy watching the surviving episode and the surviving footage of it as well. The recon for it's really good. Um... <clears throat> I've read The Myth Makers and enjoyed that. Um, my mind's kind of blanking. I, I've also seen Celestial Toy Maker and thought it was really good. So what I've seen of it, I liked. Series 3 is just such a strong one in modern who for me that it's hard to top it. It doesn't really have any bad episodes. My least favorite would probably be 42, and even that's still perfectly watchable. And Utopia is just phenomenal. Now, uh, Sound of Drums and Last of the Time Lords might not be the best series finale ever, but it's still good. It's not bad. It's, it's better than okay, but it's not really great. It's fine. Part of the problem is simply John Sims' master irks the crap out of me in his first appearance. Uh, but Utopia is great and kind of makes up for it. But I picked Series 3. Let's see how you guys voted. This one was close. This one was really close. Modern Who Series 3 won, but only by a percent. Uh, Modern Who Series 3 had 45% of the vote. Classic Season 3 had 44% of the vote, with 10% saying it was either a tie or that they couldn't decide. 1% difference. 45% to 44%. I think that's a testament to how good both of these seasons are, that it was basically splitting the vote. <clears throat> with a solid 10% not being able to decide. That's pretty impressive to me. That's a really close vote. 
And I knew doing these that the only time modern Doctor Who was going to be able to stand up to classic Doctor Who in comparisons would be the early Russell seasons, probably. Uh, I think once you get past Series 4 or Series 5, it's always going to be classic. I mean, classic Who, I think, is probably going to trump modern Who from Series 6 on every time in most people's eyes. Um, at least most people who watch both shows' eyes. But these early series, because I, I do think, unlike... Classic Who is, is a very mixed bag. It has its ups and its downs. It's good season and it's bad season. But they're kind of throughout its run. Um, although some people might argue the 80s is where it slumped. Modern Who, I think most people would agree that the strongest seasons were early in the run. I know some people really love Series 8. Some people lo really love Series 10. I think most people would agree the strongest seasons were probably the first four or five series. And then it just, the quality just kind of dipped after that. And aside from spiking occasionally, it's never really gotten back up to that early modern who point. <coughs> so I knew as doing these comparisons, it's definitely going to be the Russell seasons, not including series two. That was also, that was a big split in that one. But series one, series three, series four, I figured would be the closest votes of these, which is why I did them first. But let's see what you guys had to say in this very close poll. Jeremy Duncan says... Series 3, mainly because it is one of the few new seasons that truly utilize the interconnectivity of the story for its storytelling. The moment of Yana's fob watch in the face of Bo's warning is my favorite moment of Doctor Who from my childhood. I'm at a point in my life where there are people, when they talk about their childhood, they're talking about modern Doctor Who, and that makes me feel so old. Because it used to be, you know, when people talked about, oh, you know, Doctor Who is part of my childhood, or they're referencing Doctor Who's part of their childhood, you just assume they're talking about Classic Who, like myself, it's part of my childhood. You would assume they mean, you know, they meant Classic Who, but Modern Who has been around long enough now to where grown adults, people in their 20s, you know, can talk about childhood memories of modern Doctor Who, and that just blows my mind, that boggles my mind, and it's very humbling. And I actually wrote that down here, it's humbling to realize that there are adults now that have childhood memories of New Who, I feel old. <laughs> uh, and, oh, and he adds on here, if you wish to pile the years on, <laughs> I was nine. <laughs> and I told him I was in my mid-twenties when Modern Doctor Who started. I remember seeing reruns of Classic Who on our public broadcasting station here in the U.S. when I was little back in the 80s. I would forgot I'd written that, so here I am talking about it, and that's actually what I'd commented on here. That's funny. Uh, Sid Hill, Bruiser Music says, I think the missing episodes actually add to season three's enigmaticness. <laughs> I'm an old man and I remember early fandom before Classic Who released on VHS and hardly, and hardly anyone had seen the stories since they were broadcast and they were built up in the fandom's imagination as amazing and far, far better than the current stuff. The fandom consensus from mostly young guys who had never seen the earlier Who stories was that they were all dark and gritty and really scary and a million miles from the camp act antics of the Graham Williams and J&T years. I think this attitude was reinforced by the novelizations, which obviously didn't mention the poor effects or bad scripts. Once these stories were finally released on VHS, the fan consensus began to change and the older stories were not held in quite such high esteem. That's pretty interesting, actually. And Shamrock added on to that. He goes, check out Doctor Who Magazine 150 for the big extravaganza on Tomb. I adored it prior to 1992. It still had relevance afterwards, but, but viewers did romanticize the story, and they were also kids at the time. It's a good story with a basic plot and overall tone, but some details are less than stellar. Because I mentioned that in the comments here. I remember when Tomb was found, and many thought it didn't live up to the reputation that had been built up around it. Uh, and then uh, Sid Hill Bruiser commenting on Shamrock's part of it says, Tomb is a perfect example. Before it was rediscovered, it was regarded as the best Who story ever. Really dark, scary, and adult, and a perfect opposite of how Who was in the Graham Williams era, which was seen as childish, cheap, and camp. Who fandom is obsessed with being regarded as adult and serious because what they love is, frankly, a cheap, fun kids' adventure show, but the fans hate that. <laughs> well said. Tardis Spider, a fellow uh, Hootuber, 
Uh, says, missing episodes matter as so little of season three still exists. Of course, series three has some great stories and Martha is a great companion. JLB Who, who is also one of my patrons, says, I'm going to go with series three on this one as it's one of the stronger Russell T. Davis series. I'm not too familiar with season three, mainly due to the quantity missing. Uh, Colin Coney, who is also one of my top tier patrons, says, as you probably could have guessed, in my world, classic Who wins every time. That being said, this is closer than most, probably being Hartnell's most inconsistent season and Tenet's strongest. I guess for me, the tone of the show and writing means that what was family entertainment in the mid-60s became aimed more at children in the 2000s because viewing habits changed. Parents sit, parents sit down with their children less often to watch a show. More channels, more choice, more TVs in a household means that shows are written with distinct groups in mind, different target audiences, I agree. And viewing is more fragmented, not better or worse per se, but just different. I reconcile this on a personal level by viewing it as essentially different shows using the same universe. Well, it works for me anyway. And I added here that there are a lot of fans out there that see classic and modern as classic who and modern who as very different animals per se. Uh, Shamrock Particle adds, uh, or he says here, you know, as yogurt might say, classic. Uh, other there is not. <laughs> Talking about Spaceballs. There, I also mangled Star Wars and Spaceballs in the process, too. Modern Who Series 3 was decent, yes, but Dalek Master Plan, The Ark, etc. instantly spring to mind. The Human Nature novel was refurbished nicely, though the Fob Watch fantasy stuff I wasn't keen on initially. It has been used to clever effect later on. Uh, however, as Time Lords can't always tell one of their own, thanks to Classic Who having no consistency. <laughs> So they're shielding themselves somehow. <coughs> Scorpion uh, says, Modern Series 3 is actually my favorite of the Tenet era, but having seen it, I rarely feel the need to visit it again, which is a Modern Who issue for me in general. Classic Season 3 I return to again and again, audios and all, and enjoy it more with each visit. Yes, even the, for me, delightfully fun gunfighters. Uh, the gunfighters. Uh, <laughs> I can tell he's watched my channel before. Because he knows I doesn't like the gunfighters. Although I did add here, here that gunfighters would be much more tolerable if they didn't pal play the ballad of Johnny Ringo about every four seconds. The novelization of the gunfighters is a pretty good read. Uh, Bobby Fratrell, who is a huge, huge Delta and the Bannerman fan, uh, says, This one is very hard to be fair. Mythmakers and Massacre are classics. Gunfighters, great fun. And The War Machines is good too. However, Modern 3 is the second best uh, series of the moder of the Russell T. Davis era. I voted modern, but now <laughs> but now I type. I'm thinking classic. Tom Garb says season three for me has one of my favorite stories of all time, the massacre. And I said one of your favorites from just the audio alone, and <clears throat> he clarifies, well, I've seen the reconstruction as well, but I prefer preferably listen to the audio. I find it quite heart pounding and really grown up. I'd love it to be recovered, but at the same time, I'd be fearful it might taint my vision of it. Although the last few minutes of the story with do Dodo do let it down about, do let it down a bit. I could do without that. Uh, Foggy D says, Modern Who Season 3, Series 3, uh, contains the Lazarus Experiment, while Classic Season 3 includes the Gunfighters. But maybe it's not fair to compare one series' worst story to another's best. So, obviously, he really likes the Lazarus Experiment and hates the gunfighters, obviously. Which is good, because Lazarus Experiment's actually pretty fantastic. Uh, I think I voted for Modern when it came to Season 4 versus Series 4. But being serious about this vote here, Classic does still have the edge on this one, I guess. Mind you, if fewer episodes were missing, that doesn't necessarily mean I'd rate Hartnell's third season even higher. Henry Andrews says, gotta be Season 3. Imagine if we had all the missing episodes. Dalek, Master Plan, Celestial Toy Maker, Trumpet for me over Modern Series 3. Although Series 3 uh, does have a pretty good finale. Joshua Joshua says it has to be classic Season 3 because there's so much to explore. And not much of the John Wiles stuff, John Wiles stuff survives. I would love to see those episodes recovered one day, but as time goes by, it's sadly looking more and more unlikely. But I really would love to explore that season New Who Series 3, at least you can watch any time. <clears throat> yes, sadly, John Wiles 
did not employ John Kira to do telesnaps while he was the producer, uh, which really makes the missing stories from his era uh, hurt even more. Bananas are good, uh, says, well, since most of classic season three is a mystery and series three of Modern Who is probably my favorite tenant series, it's a no brainer for me here. Uh, Reborn Itsy and Bitsy says, this is a close one. I wonder which one he picked. Uh, and Paul Bailey, a fellow Hootuber as well, says series three wins this one for me. So, a lot of mixed answers there. I think the comments probably steered more towards classic from the looks of it. But the vote was so close. 45% saying Series 3, 44% saying Classic Season 3, with 10% calling it a tie or that they weren't sure. Series 3 wins for me. I love Series 3, my favorite season of Modern Doctor Who. So, if you didn't get to vote in this poll, I'm curious which one you prefer between Season 3 of Classic Who and Series 3 of Modern Who. So comment down below and let me know. Other things to do, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button. That helps me out. I am trying to reach a thousand subscribers in 2023, so I would certainly appreciate that. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me that way. There's a link to that down in the description below. Several different tiers there to uh, look at and choose from, and uh, that does help a lot, and I certainly appreciate it. It helps me pay the bills. I wanna give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons uh, Dr. Finn Perkins, Colin Coney, and um, Stephen as well. My mind just just blank. Stephen Crane, my mind went blank for a second. I don't know why. Um, I also have a P.O. box as well. That, that's down in the description, as is a uh, link to my Amazon wish list, which I update regularly. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.